Uh, so let's have a chat. Thank you very much, Susanna. Let's have a chat, shall we, to the Liberal Democrat uh, candidate uh, for uh, Uxbridge and uh, Ryslip South, uh, Blaise uh, Bakish. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's appreciate You've moved around a bit, haven't you? Oh, I, are you saying that I'm not a local candidate based in Uxbridge in South Ryslip? No, I'm saying that you used to be a Conservative. Oh, um, well, that's that's sort of true in a sense, in that <laughs> sort, I was... Sort uh, of true. Well, you know, I, 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 I did work for the Conservative Party out in Brussels and in, in the European Parliament advising MEPs there. Um, but yeah, I, you know, the phrase has been used so often now, it's sort of lost all meaning, but has it? I have been on a journey. And the thing is, it wasn't Brexit that made me leave the Tory party, but Brexit was like a mask that once lifted, unveiled what I thought be an army of politically... Um, uh, vac vacuous, ruthless Tory MPs that is didn't that really journey, care about the consequences the, is, of their actions. Is that the journey to 2016 or what's happened subsequently? So, um, I, having worked for the Tory party, I saw them up close. I saw them for what they were and I realised this is not the party for me. I'm a proud internationalist. I, have, I hold li liberal values that are dear to me. And, you know, to quote um, Paddy Ashdown... Um, liberalism was like a jacket in my cupboard all along and all I had to do was put it on and um, show, stand up for what, what I believe in. So that was a journey for you. So you, you would have, in the old days, described yourself as a conservative with a small c and you've made that journey. Yes. OK, so, so but you still believe in Remain? Well, yeah, I thought Brexit was a bad idea. You, do you still think Brexit is a bad idea? Well, yes. Yeah, the, the current situation we have right now is is awful and it's not doing anybody any favors like look at the cost of living crisis that we've but, got but now. it's what people it's voted helping. for cost of living crisis is nothing to do with brexit did, cost, did, cost of living crisis is to do with policies uh, retention trying to balance the budget the result of liz truss uh, and uh, quasi quite crashing the economy that would that would be the argument against you, that you, you you wouldn't point to the unnecessary trade barriers that we've erected with our nearest and biggest market that's not helping the cost of living crisis well hold on if i go to the airports that are aviation in your constituency that is a direct, what is your view on you, Liz? Because everybody else has talked about that. And I, I would suggest to you that you, you do have a fair few people come into your constituency. Well, so happy to talk about you, Liz. Um, you know, as Liberal Democrats, we're obviously pro cutting down air pollution. But um, what we've seen is that this scrappage scheme makes no sense. What's the point in a scrappage scheme if practically nobody's entitled to it? Well, he's broadened it, it's £110 million. Pounds. Uh, and there are more people entitled to it now than were two, three weeks ago uh, because pressure has been brought to bear and he would argue, the Mayor of London, that he has listened. But still, you listen to any uh, radio interview um, over the past few weeks or, or, or on this issue, it's every time it's a person, it could be, let's call him white van man, who's saying it's not cost effective for him to um, get rid of his van, change up, get a new one, and he could be going out of business as a result. Yeah. What this the ULES extension doesn't take into account is the cost of this, the the cost of living and the crisis now in people's pockets. So what we need to see is reform of the ULES expansion before it goes ahead. Well, it isn't. He's given 110 million pounds. The reform that I think you're asking for would be central government because they're not supporting it like they have other areas of this country. Yes, well, th there you go. You've sort of answered your own question there. Why isn't central government supporting it? Why isn't there more money on the table for us to make this transition? Yeah, but we are where we are and it's been brought in. I mean, it's interesting, I think, that you and I haven't really talked properly, I mean, mm. although you less could be, about local issues. You're not a local, are you? So, uh, I'm a West Londoner, but I had been with the Lib Dems for some time and I was actually um, a politically neutral civil servant at the time, So, you're, but you're allowed to be a Lib Dem member. And I was so moved, enraged really, by Partygate that I, when I saw the opportunity to run in this by-election, I thought, right, that's it. I'm going for it. I'm going to send a message Why? to the to Why? I'm going to send a message to the Tories that Partygate has not got down well with the British public. Partygate for me is personal. I lost my father to COVID in the very week that Johnson partied, um, uh, who I was living with at the time. You know, I. Um, uh, I find Johnson's lack of contrition sickening. He's so obnoxious. He doesn't care about the hurt, the, the, the hurt that people had to go through when 
whilst he was partying and laughing in our faces, I was sitting by the phone, not able to go into hospital, um, and nor were any of my siblings, for, for, for about a month. I feel like I represent hundreds of thousands of families across the country who feel the same way um, about, about Partygate. I'm, I'm sorry about your dad, um, and I'm sorry that we haven't got those messages uh, either from Boris Johnson, but might I suggest to you um, that you're not running plays against Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson has gone. Boris Johnson has decided uh, to let this seat go. So, you know, I, I have all sympathy for you and I imagine anybody else who's listening and I'm so sorry about what happened to you and 200,000 other families. You're not running against Boris Johnson, are you? But the thing is, you look at the Conservative candidate, Steve Tuckwell, he basically is Boris Johnson. He, um, he shows... No, he, he's not no, Boris no he's a, he's he, a local. Yeah, he, he's a local councillor who's done great work in supporting that area. Now, I'm not talking about his policies. I'm just suggesting to you that it might be a challenge that you would have to overcome uh, for somebody who is rooted in community. Why didn't he have the guts to say anything? about Partygate? Why he, he doesn't have to resign? I mean, I would have liked some sort of statement or anything do say something you know we're all at the hustings last week and then we will be there again today we're all when it's proved that boris johnson is a dishonest man and and we were asked do we think he's a dishonest man we all say no 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 and steve tucker will just will just go well you know uh, the uh, um, some long-winded answer about the privileges committee not being fair you know not not just Johnson's behaviour over this, but the Tory top brass as well. All of those um, MPs um, who, who who are now in trouble for calling it a kangaroo okay. court. They're, they're the Tories that I'm pretty sure the vast majority of this country are sick of and they want them out. So so not, not so much a pro-Lib Dem, but an anti-Tory vote. Look, I'm going to give you 30 seconds like I have everybody else. Let me say thank you for coming. Let me say sorry again, because I've in, done that interview. I've spoken to people who couldn't go to the hospital I know what that does. So um, I'm not going to do this interview as though I don't understand what you're saying, yeah? Uh, but you are asking the people of Uxbridge and Rye Slip South to vote for you. And the people of greater, wider London are listening to this programme. They want to hear from you. You have 30 seconds uh, to put yourself forward. Well, thanks a lot. Um, so I'm standing in this by-election because I genuinely believe that there are lots of residents of Uxbridge and South Ryslip who share Liberal Democrat values and they should have the right to vote for their Liberal Democrat candidate. There's no pact, there's no deal, there's no alliance with Labour or any of the other parties. We're, we're having a pro-business um, message which is let's sort out our relationship with our biggest and nearest market, let's sort out Hillington Hospital and the shocking waiting times and let's sort out the political football that is Oxbridge Police Station that is past hands between Tory and Labour, not keeping it in a state of limbo where it says it's permanently shut on Google Maps. A plague on both their houses, you should vote for the, the Lib Dems. Blaise Bikish, Liberal Democrat candidate uh, for said constituency of Ryslip and uh, uh, you know, uh, Ryslip and Ryslip. Thank you very much. Uh, I just did that to test you, Susanna, to see if you were still awake. Uh, can I take this opportunity, like I have with the other candidates, to wish you the very best of luck and say thanks very much for coming in. Thanks very much for your time, Eddie. From the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker, play BBC Radio London, and on your radio, the sound of London.